Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice little Saturday morning over here from a dark and gloomy hell of Finland. Good for me. No more sweating abound as I walk around this town and plenty to talk about in the last 24 hours. While we did say low term time frames were showing some downside and, and targeted regions were down around about 42 to 42,500 or so, I wouldn't have necessarily been able to tell you that we we're going to have a nice little 4,000 or almost $5,000 move right there built upon the backs of the China news. Now, of course, if you're new to this market, uh, get used to the China. Just just get, to, get, just get used to China because they're coming in and they're coming in dry, baby. Anyways, uh, with that said, there is plenty to discuss, but I'll actually save all of the data here on the Crown Chain application for tomorrow as we'll do a much more long-term in-depth video addressing uh, what to expect or, or what to be looking for, especially on this next quarterly close. But today I want to kind of follow up on the last 24 uh, hours of price action, talk about the weekend action. Of course, when it comes to weekend action, I don't really trust, you know, anything all that much, but there are a few, uh, you know, obvious setups going on right now. And, uh, and with that said, let's just pop right on into it right here. So yesterday I came back after, um, a, uh, after the live stream of which I should probably address that first as on the live stream, we did identify a hidden bearish evidence on, you know, a four hour time frame for CME right here. We did say a targeted region for that would have been 43 thousand first if you do start to close below 43 then i would extend that target all the way down to 42 and while we actually did overshoot that target by about a thousand bucks on a closing basis that did hold now with that in mind we actually do have some bullish evidence on the other side right there and that is going to be your little bouncy into the end of day i want to address this really really clearly right now because yesterday i did come back a little bit later for a shorts video and by the way i've been getting a lot of messages that people haven't been getting the shorts video this would be like the one time we'll say hey if you want the shorts videos i, I think the the best way to actually get them is you actually do have to subscribe um, in order to get notifications maybe even maybe even do the tickle the bell thing too look only if you want to do it obviously I'm not trying to like fucking force people to be here. <laughs> Anyways, with that said, uh, I came back on that video and I said, hey, we have something very, very important to be uh, aware of coming into the end of day here for CME closure. And that is going to be where does CME close? Does it close above or below the 200 simple? And by extension, the weekly 20 minute expansion average right here. And if you do look at these higher time frames, anything daily or above, it will show a closing price, as you can see, of 42,520. If you go down to the lower term time frames over here, I'm sure people are going to be a little bit uh, inquisitive about this showing that it did close above 43,000 bucks, which would have been above the 200 simple as that is at 43. And in uh, and that, and that would have been above the 21 as well on the weekly, both very important things. However, I want to address something very, very important right now. So when it comes down to this, what are you looking for? You're looking for the settlement or delivery price, uh, which is marked at, well, you can see right in over here. Hey, get the fuck out of my face. Um, where, where is it? Hold on. I know you're here somewhere. I know you're here somewhere for the love of God, man. Just show it to me. Just show it to me, baby. Just show it to me. Um, oh yeah, hold on. I, I think I just had it right there, actually. Let me just go back. Yeah, settlement price, 42,359 spot four one. So that is obviously well below 43,000 bucks. And that would be essentially what I'm looking at right here. So with that in mind, let's just make this nice and simple. No need to be any more crazier than this. And what do we have? Well, we have what you probably don't want to be seeing if you are bullish on the long term, at least for, you know, at least on the weekly chart right here, uh, because we have, well, certainly a confirmed lower high right here on the weekly. We already have our lower low right here. So I would be having a bit of a downside bias unless, unless one thing happens basically before Basically, before end of month here, um, if Bitcoin fails to get back above about forty five thousand bucks, well, certainly then. But uh, but even then, you know, still forty eight thousand bucks, kind of where I'd be looking for in order to you know maybe put back on the bull, the uh, the bula horns of which we'd get rejected there actually a little bit more than a week ago now, and that was my conditions for essentially well confirming this as you know your next lower high and looking for general continuation of which we've been getting throughout this week and that makes me want to address something else because I've been getting a lot of questions from people who say crown you know you 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 know you're basically showing us this chart from, uh, let me actually just bring it up right here. You're, you're showing us this chart for like a couple months ago and you stopped showing it anymore. It's, are you like hiding something from us? So I, was show, I was showing something like this where basically I was saying that Bitcoin probably puts in a move up to about 50,000 or so, somewhere into the deep 40s and comes back down. Um, no, it's because I want to see things in succession with each other. And of course, in betwixt all of this happening right here, we did get some pretty in, important fundamental indicators, which I wanted to give some credence to, namely the hash ribbons indicator and a little bit of the moon action as well. No, just kidding. Although, well, I guess it's not working too well right now, to be fair. But, but more importantly with that, 
Uh, more importantly with that, the reason why that became my second scenario is because of the hash rate indicator that we that did fire off uh, off of the $38,000 low that Bitcoin printed in, I believe it was late August. Anyways, with that, or sorry, early August, that is. Anyways, back on over here, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's actually come up with a bit of, uh, a bit of some actual actionable things. Uh, if I can maybe use a different word, that'd probably be good as well. And let's actually go down to the very, very low term time frames here as well. Bitcoin's starting to spill on over yet again. After that, uh, you know, just reaction else adjust her life through a uh, suitcase in the background. Good luck with that. And what do we have right here? It does look like Bitcoin probably wants to test the bottom side of yesterday's range yet again, regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish in this case, kind of similar to yesterday, test the lows first, and then probably another bounce. I don't suspect that Bitcoin's going to break, um, you know, down. I actually don't think that Bitcoin's going to break down uh, over the weekend. If it is going to happen, probably happens uh, around the quarterly closure, if I had to if I had to guess. And of course, in between there, I'd probably be looking for a bounce, you know, somewhere around, you know, low $41,000 region. Maybe we get another wick somewhere down exactly where Bitcoin was. Now, a lot of volume was done yesterday, obviously. So that is, you know, a little bit of a good sign, but that volume is mostly selling volume. So fair enough. Anyways, lower term time from momentum also is over here. Let's see what we got going on. We do see full hour stokes are going to be nice and healthily down. Uh, which we identified yesterday way back on over here and they'll be remaining down as long as below 42 uh, 600 so basically as long as that condition is met i do I, I do look for next test down around the current lows probably a bounce there buy early is going to be showing what it's going to be actually freshly crossing down with any sort of a closure below 42.7. That's typically, you know, good continuation setup right here. And hourly is already coming down as well. And by the way, just as an aside, if you are going to trade over the weekends, just a funny thing, the hourly stocks actually seem to be pretty fucking good for what it's worth. Uh, 42.750 is the magical number on these ones. And uh, and so, yes, as long as those conditions are essentially met, I would be looking for Bitcoin to pop back down around here and probably put another uh, another bouncy bounce. And then the question becomes, does Bitcoin get back above our current rejective high from yesterday or not? That being just about 45,000 bucks. If it does, I'd have the same analysis as yesterday for the short and medium term time frame specifically, meaning that I would be looking for another move back up somewhere around about 47,000 bucks. And at that point, have to kind of be, you know, on lower high watch yet again for your medium time frames. But in this case, you know, where that aligned with, that actually aligned right at the 786 Fibonacci tracement right there, which is uh, a, a level that the market actually used to really love, not so much anymore, but fair enough. Anyways, with that said, then I'd start to look at the medium term time frames over here, obviously. And yeah, same sort of thing. If we do bring up momentum oscillators over here, what are they essentially suggesting? Yeah, maybe one more test of the lows and then very likely a bounce. Bounce, I think, will at the very least get to 44000 bucks or so. The question is, can it then clear above 45000 bucks? If that starts to happen, well, then, you know, like I said, I, I'd, extend, I'd extend targets to about forty-seven, And, uh, you know, maybe the Bulas uh, pull in a little bit of hopium right here. But with all of that in mind, again, keep, you know, keep an eye on what CME did on Friday as that is rather conclusive and you know, bounces, uh, bounces that fail to get back above 48,000 bucks are just lower highs uh, for any time from that actually matters for general market uh, structure and and more uh, interesting trend for, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say long term, but the medium and I suppose long term. Anyways, uh, with that said, let's actually go check out mom uh, momentum oscillators on the medium term time frames over here. 12 hours is going to be doing what? Popping back up above 42,850. So we do see 42,850 coming in on a lot of levels right now. And uh, actually daily will pop back up above 41.3. So again, I don't think that Bitcoin's going to be making new lows today or, or like extending, you know, the losses uh, below about 40,500, especially on like a daily closing basis. Um, for right now, you know, if you want a little bit more hope in Bitcoin is <laughs> somewhat salvaging itself over the 200x benchmark average right there. I don't know how much I trust that right now. Again, to me, this is a setup for a silver cross, and this would be a silver cross to the downside, which is actually, I actually kind of like more than a golden cross or death cross, to be honest with you. Anyways, um, and the pivot would be at 45,000 bucks, just, you know, just as, you know, as an aside. So as long as we're below there, uh, do have to be kind of bearish on the daily, even after a bit of a short term bounce above 45,000 bucks. Yeah, short term, medium terms, uh, time frames get to rule the world for a little bit longer. And then, of course, if Bitcoin does start to take out that area in the short term time frames, I don't think it's happening before, uh, you know, a, a dump ola here first. But if it were to, if it were to pop back above 42,850, especially on, you know, two hour, four hour closure and then bleed into the 12 hour, then yes, I'd be looking for a bounce up first somewhere around about 44 or five or so. And then come back after that and you know if it clears 40, uh, 45,000 bucks even then yeah extend those targets again all good in the hood but for right now you know it does seem more downside angled and do we have any hidden bearish evidence right here no we actually don't which is what i would like to see if we are going to 
hop on over however this just looks you know just this just looks a little bit sad in the short term time frames here anyways i am nine minutes into this video what else do i want to address okay i do want to address a few other things if you do want a little bit of hopium over here actually no hold on let's 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 not do the hopium just yet but uh let's also look at the gaussian channel i had this one on uh, at the beginning of this video actually and uh and you can see the bottom of the gaussian channel right now is about 42 000, or sorry 41,500 or so so if bitcoin comes back down around there i'd be looking for a bounce on first pass at the very uh for the short term time frames but here we go you know we do have that setup the tried and true setup the setup that i absolutely love in this case probably not going to be in the direction that most people love we do see volatility increasing it is above 50 percentile now actually currently uh, currently at 57 and a half and what do we see daily jewel down it is in a bit of a bouncy area but it already kind of tested over here and that was your bounce and that was your bounce from 43 all the way to 49 almost okay anyways uh and then right in over here uh whoops daily daily rsi what do we what, what are we working on it's not really giving me too much with that so overall we got trend we got volatility and jewel would still say that momentum is to the downside uh for the time being and of course a rejection right at the median gaussian channel right there the best sign by the way uh speaking of the gaussian channel see where we're at the five day yes did rally off the medium band right here yet again so forty thousand bucks is going to be a big area to going onwards and forwards here for these higher term time frames what does that essentially imply if bitcoin does start to if bitcoin does start to break that region you know i know a lot of people are looking at 37 or thirty-eight thousand bucks right here sure there's probably gonna be a short-term time frame bounce there um you know i i wouldn't mind if a multi-thousand dollar bounce to be fair but uh ultimately i do not think that things would stop there i strongly believe things would come down to the 30 uh 32 anywhere between about 32 and 34 thousand bucks to fill the gap on cme which this is a legitimate one down here no doubt about that and um and then we'll you know we'll come back after that and i'm at, uh, that's in line with anything on the weekly yeah you can see that the weekly median uh gaussian channel will actually be in that in that vicinity probably coming into next week maybe the week after that open interesting very very interesting nonetheless so you know it <laughs> well it was a nice fun run to the upside <laughs> again you know I, I'd, I'd be happy to get bullish back above about uh, forty eight thousand bucks hey fair enough um but now we have to really be preparing for the quarterly closure here so this would be another thing that would actually make me uh bullish um coming into end of year and, and i do still think that there's a decent chance of it god damn it there, there's still a decent chance of that let me just this up right here and uh, and if bitcoin does close the quarterly anywhere above about forty five thousand bucks especially but even i think it's currently actually sorry no let me adjust that forty four thousand bucks would be the line in the sand as long as bitcoin is above there you know i do think that bitcoin uh probably does have a pretty good q4 in 2021 coming into the end of the year here um could could still come alongside of a test down to thirty five thousand bucks by the way so it, we do need to kind of fit in the more long-term analysis with the I, I mean, this would also kind of, both of them kind of seem long, but the weekly versus the quarterly analysis, which, you know, that'd be relatively short versus uh, definitely relatively long as well. So with that in mind, uh, looking at this right here, you know, I actually still do like this, to be fair, on a quarterly ba on a quarterly closing basis, but we only got uh, six days left to go. And if Bitcoin, you know, if Bitcoin could rally up about a couple thousand bucks from here, which is definitely possible, you know, maybe maybe it has a nice bounce off that next uh, test down to 41,000 bucks. And yes, that'd look pretty damn good. But you know, a lot of things are starting to uh, give a lot of warning signals, uh, not just with trend, but also weekly RSI breaking below the exponential right there. Not not the best thing. Also getting rejected from the bullish control zone. Not a conclusive. I mean, not like a death sense or anything like that. But you know, short term it would imply some down. Obviously, five day. Um, actually, let me take this one off right here. Go back on over here. The five day close. Oh no, the the five day actually just closed. Um, so let's go back on over here what about for spot price action technically did uh close below the fit uh the 21 right there but not 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 anything too crazy uh the weekly right here would be the next sort of i suppose hoping if you really need it for tomorrow right as tomorrow's going to be the weekly close for spot price action so if you do want to wait for something like that I, I don't think it's relevant to be honest with you i think cme kind of rules the world but uh if spot price action closed below what is this 40 43 5 so it's a little bit more generous uh or sorry it's a little bit uh, less generous than what cme had cme had it at forty three thousand bucks essentially then you know i'm going to be looking for a move down to the uh down to the 55 right here now for what it's worth and i'll actually be uploading a video on this strategy uh probably probably this weekend or maybe maybe early this coming week um you know coming back down to the 55 after that it's actually not a bearish thing for the weekly but you know that is a fucking massive move by the by, uh, you know at the end of the day anyways i mean that's a 15 that's like a 16 percent move and who knows where a stray wick comes down you know anywhere between 15 and 16 percent anyways uh, i'll leave you with one last piece of hopium right here as bitcoin tries to mount another bounce off the off the 200 
and uh and what and what is it yes it's this nasdaq our tech sector our beloved tech sector which keeps the whole world open and running <laughs> you know for better or worse here uh did actually have a decent bounce back on friday right there uh reclaiming the 10 simple and the 21 and more importantly having a phenomenal bounce off the 21 on the weekly right here so i would be looking for this to open up on a bounce coming into next week and then of course this one's going to be closing not just monthly but also quarterly as well for right now the monthly is you know so certainly so shown some weakness there but quarterly Quarterly would still be fine. So, barring any sort of catastrophic close below, let's call it fifteen thousand uh, bucks, I do still think that this one, you know, has a chance coming into uh, end of the year, and I'd, and I'd still prolong my sort of corrective call for this one into maybe you know late October or November, something like that, before this does very, 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 very likely play out a fifteen to twenty percent correction. I mean, this was the first time that we've actually even seen a prolonged stint that being just three days below the fifty-five right there, which is significant. Anyways, um, so, I, you know, I would be looking for this to open up on a bounce, uh, you know, when traditional markets open up this week, uh, that being, you know, U.S. open, of course, not just when futures open. And, uh, and then Bitcoin probably bounces with it. But, you know, does the question is, does Bitcoin get back above 45,000 bucks or not? If it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's, it's not even, it's just, just even a lower term time frame, lower high. I mean, that's, that's really all that is at that point. Uh, back above 45,000 bucks. Yes, I do start to extend my targets down uh, up to 47,000 bucks. That would certainly make this start to look a lot more like a bear trap with confirmation still above 48,000 bucks. But I hope that I'm being heard as clearly as possible. Whenever I talk about these bear traps, uh, talking about a bear trap is not the same thing as confirming a bear trap and i hope that i've been deliberately as clear as fucking possible although by reading some of the comments maybe not um that uh when i talk about a confirmation of bear trap that means that you know bitcoin needs to close above that relevant level in order for that to be actionable it was uh coming into the last uh, week and a half here above forty nine thousand five hundred. That condition was not met. Bitcoin put in a lower high right here. Then I moved that condition down to 48,000 bucks. Bitcoin failed again at 45,000 bucks right here. And so, you know, friend is quite literally your friend if you just let it be for it for the time being. Um, and the longer that Bitcoin stays below 45,000 bucks, the more and more this is going to look like it's going to have an absolutely fucking face melting move down to uh, 33 or 32, somewhere down around there. So, you know, Bulas are on the clock Olo right now. Need that Bula moon to, uh, to start helping out. And until then, it does look like a little bit of short-term time frame uh, downside. Again, I'd be, probably be looking for another bounce off of the forty-one thousand dollars level. Um, let's 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 talk about what would happen, or or what what if no bounce? What if no bounce? You know, how are you going to know that? Uh, daily closure below forty-one thousand bucks would constitute a breakdown for myself. Twelve hour, which by the way is bounced off the two. Okay. Uh, below about 40,700 would do it for me as well. If one of those two things happens, then yes, I'd be looking for this one to have the next move down somewhere around about 38,000 bucks or 38.5. Probably bounces there. Um, bounce probably fails. You know, another lower high, maybe in the low 40s, and then uh, work our way down to the uh, to the to the low $30,000 territory. Anyways, I think I'm going to shut off this video right here. I do want to make it a little more on the short side. Tomorrow we'll come back with some more long-term analysis and. Um, and well, hopefully that was helpful. With that said, take care. I salute you and until next time.